Thoughtful AI is an organization with a mission to accelerate the world's adoption of automation and AI so humans can solve our most complex existential problems. And the company believes automation gives human workers the freedom to pursue the creative strat strategic work that builds companies as well as their careers. And with me is Alex Sekoff, the CEO and co-founder of Thoughtful AI. And uh, great to have you here. Great to be here, Jane. Thanks for having me. So your company is essentially focusing on the future of work. So what yes. does that look like? Yeah, we fundamentally believe that people shouldn't be operating software just like telephone operators back in the day, plugging the cords. Mm -hmm. And we think it's better for people to do better, higher value work, not only psychologically, but actually there's data points that suggest that people make more once they get reallocated to better work that's not just data entry or repetitive workflows. So we think this is the next generation and our AI agents are helping solve that specifically in the healthcare industry. Yeah, and I know you're doing a lot of kind of the back office, a lot of that paperwork and things that healthcare is, you know, burdened with but necessary. And you just raised $20 million. So um, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, kind of a tough capital raise environment lately. Explain um, that and what you plan to do with that. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We raised it in an up round valuation. We were very great with our money from our seed round during the last two years in which startups had to really tighten their belts. And we're planning on investing a lot of this into research and development, bringing AI agents to all of the mid-market healthcare providers out there. We focus in specialties like dental, vision, behavioral health. So our help, uh, our mission really has helped democratize this technology as well to providers who can't afford this technology. So that starts with research and development and then also go to market, expanding our brand and market presence of so people who know thoughtful AI is. And we're out there doing the work of deploying AI into production systems. Now, you mentioned you particularly work with the healthcare industry. Um, explain exactly what the AI does and how might the end user, the consumer, benefit from that? Absolutely. So if you think about there's three stakeholders in everything that's in healthcare. There's the payer, the insurance company, the provider of the service, the healthcare uh, actual practitioner or service, and then there's you, the patient. Right now, we service providers when they pay, uh, when they perform the service, whatever healthcare service that might be, they need to get paid. Well, that process is very complicated. Submitting a claim to a payer, it gets denied a lot of the times. They have to resubmit it. That's why a lot of the times our healthcare bills are so high. There are teams of 50, 100, 200 people at a provider just submitting claims. And so when industries might be 1% to cost uh, collect money, sometimes it's up to 8 to 12% on uh, that money to collect. So for example, if you're a hundred million dollars in services rendered healthcare provider, you might only collect 80, 90 of that just from denied claims. And then also your cost to collect that is very expensive. So we actually help those providers get paid more money. So then that lowers the bill for the patient, which is excellent. That helps uh, the provider get paid more so they can provide better service and better quality. So we think healthcare, it starts with the cash. And this is the fundamental point at which uh, more money can be given to the provider and uh, back to the patient's uh, bottom line, their wallet. So it, ideally, it sounds like more efficient process, more cost effective, less stressful for everybody involved, <laughs> which would be exactly. great. Exactly. Think about this. Our AI agents turn you into superhuman. So if you could process 100 claims a day without it, now you can process 1,000 claims. Mm -hmm. So you're not having to move the data with your hands anymore or go log into a a state eligibility website, you're actually able to go do higher value work, like dive into analytics, call payers, talk to patients. And that's the work that people should be doing, not just moving data around on yeah. screens. So this is how you're bridging technology and a practical real world application. Yes, absolutely. Applied AI. So we're taking all of this complex technology we hear in the news, like large language models and open AI and all of this, we're putting together for a really easy package for a provider to deploy and making it very white glove premium service. So they don't have to think about, well, my data security, my encryption, my infrastructure, we do all of that. So it makes it really easy to have live AI working and adding value. Yeah. And my guess is it probably is more accurate, eliminate some kind of human mistakes that we make. Totally. I mean, <laughs> if you have to submit a hundred claims a day and just it's repetitive, of course, we're going to fat finger things. And then those claims get denied. And then you know, you end up with that patient responsibility invoice for thousands of dollars. And you're like, well, do I owe this money? Well, a lot of times those are clerical errors. And so we need to eliminate that. And software should be running those processes. And it's just going to help create a more efficient system overall. 
Now, I was interested on your website. You talked about hiring AI agents. Yeah. Um, just like you would hire a human. So what does that look like exactly? So four years ago, we started in this journey of AI. We start, we called them bots. Mm. And a bot is basically like you hear chat bots or any bots that they can go through these repetitive workflows. Then large language models came and we could turn our bots and they could have intelligence. So just like a person, they could get to a thing and then start making decisions. So before large language models, maybe a bot could do 60% of a workflow and then break. Now we can perform up to 100% of what a person is performing on a computer with very high accuracy, 99% plus. So almost better than a human performing computer work. So that's why we're excited to now say our fully human capable AI agents, you can hire them just like an employee, have them design, train, deployed in production in 90 days faster than it takes to hire a person. So a lot of these teams are backlogged, meaning they might have 50 people on a team, but they need 100 to process the number of claims they need to get through. And so we're able to augment that staff with these AI agents. Yeah. And that leaves the humans to do things that humans are good at, like dealing with other humans. And Exactly. Talking to patients, talking <laughs> to the doctors, understanding you know, more of the intricacies of why the claim got denied. And so that's where our brain should be used, not just mindless clicking and uh, pushing data along. What have you heard from the healthcare workers that have been using the AI? How has it impacted their work? Yeah, I think we hear a lot in the media that people are scared of AI, but we actually have data that suggests otherwise. People are excited that they have their AI agents, that they're not having to clip through all the workflows. And so they actually, um, we have standard names for them like Ava, Cam, and Phil, but people want to name them their own names and they're almost like digital coworkers. And they like, I think we've, someone named theirs like R2D2 from the Star Wars reference. And I think it's just fun because at Thoughtful AI, you know, we're a super premium applied AI company, but we like to make it fun. You can see that in our colors and our gradient. Like AI doesn't have to be this scary overlord that's taking over the world. It can just be the thing that helps us and gets us to that next stage, just like the industrial revolution got us to the next phase. I think of this as a next revolution and we just have to maybe more lean into it uh, to see the 10x productivity output that it's going to achieve. Yeah, I heard somebody recently compare AI to how we used to have like animals, um, you know, pull tractors and and things like that. And now we're relying on machines for that. So, you know, they're doing the heavy lifting and, and letting humans do other things. And and I have used AI in my work. My husband has used it and um, it's beneficial and a time saver. Absolutely. So, yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about, do you have any case studies or any kind of return on investment that you've seen with these companies? Yeah. But one of our customers, her name, uh, Kara Perry, VP of Revenue Cycle Management at Signature Dental Partners, started with us about a year and a half ago, deployed one AI agent, proof of concept. Really, we were focusing on a KPI called Days Sales Outstanding. Basically, how long does it take to actually get paid once you submit the claim? And typically in industry, best in class is, you know, 45 days. If you can get to 30 days in healthcare, you're rocking and rolling, depending on the claim type. And in that first AI agent, we got one of her claims type paid in 14 days. Incredible results, just like unheard of. And so she went to her board of directors and her executive team and said, hey, this is not only working, like we're getting paid faster and that's real money in the door sooner. So she got authority to go from one to, I think she's now over 15 different use cases we're working on in parallel. And the beauty is we've built it. We start in revenue cycle, but we can build finance agents. We can build HR agents. So we're enterprise wide. So now once you start with revenue, then you start thinking, well, what are these repetitive invoicing processes I'm doing? What are these repetitive HR processes? And so we really want to help the provider at all levels of the enterprise. Okay. So you could expand this beyond healthcare to other industries as well. Yeah. We look at it as like, where are the most inefficient systems in the world? U.S. healthcare is very inefficient. And, uh, I'm just going to call it out right now. The U.S. government could use some agents, so uh, potentially an act two later on. But we have a we have enough work in healthcare uh, to do. But yeah, government would be a, a great next kind of use case. We are in a regulated industry in healthcare, and so we're already building the AI where we can deploy AI in regulated uh, environments. Mm-hmm. Now, so what about the future of the company? Maybe government at some point. Where else do you see thoughtful going? Perhaps an IPO someday. I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think we're definitely on the IPO path growing fast. We're already raised our Series A, but at our Series B revenue milestone already. So there's a lot of demand. We're actually completely supply side constrained. I mean, we're building capacity fast. We don't want to lower quality ever. So we constantly are trying to build the right supply of engineers so we can build AI agents faster. So we're rapidly building. Uh, yes, IPO. 
five, six, seven years, whenever the markets are right. Maybe not the best IPO market now, but maybe in five years, we'll definitely be at those revenue milestones. And so we're looking to just, again, focus on the core thing, helping providers, serving the mission to help them adopt AI, and then helping them get paid more on their claims and faster. Mm -hmm. So as a thought leader in AI, let's just talk about the industry in in general. Where do you see it going? How will we live? Um, You know, we hear a lot of talk about robo taxis and, you know, AI is having a personal AI assistant, everyone. I mean, what do you see really happening in the next few years? Yeah. So I think like, like all things, people get very excited. So there's like the hype curve. We see self-driving cars. We heard about that 10 years ago, but we're still just limping into self-driving cars, it's not very uh, prevalent and ubiquitous yet. So I think like anything, AI is just in the early innings here. I would equate, and other people have equated this to the large language models are like refrigeration, but we still have the Coca-Cola's being built, the brands. Thoughtful AI is more like the Coca-Cola, a brand that's deploying applications and saw in uh, measuring values. So I think we still are in the early innings of seeing who are going to be the major winners in applied AI. And applications layer. Yeah. Well, it is fascinating to watch this. And one of the most transformational technologies I I think I've seen since the internet. So um, it's been amazing. Alex, congratulations on your success so far and best of luck. Thank you, Jane. This has been great. Thank you.